Good day, it's day six, and today we're going to be looking at that the Christian is looking forward, anticipating the return of Jesus Christ. This is one of the pillars, I believe, of the church as well. Uh, many in the past uh, Christians have endured persecution and death, imprisonment for long periods of time, uh, looking forward to heaven. And what God has guaranteed to each and every one of us who are believers. And so it is wonderful. First John 3, 2 and 3 says, Beloved, now we are the children of God, and it has not appeared as yet what we shall be. We know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him just as he is. And everyone who has this hope fixed on him purifies himself just as he is pure. And I think one of the uh, key words here is he who has this hope fixed on him and fixed on Jesus, looking on to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. We need to remind ourselves that, as the songwriter said, this world is not my home. As a Christian, you know, uh, you observe sometimes other Christians and I remember one Christian who uh, was in our congregation at one time got tangled up in politics and all the news about various parties and one group saying this about th them and th they're saying this about the other group and got caught up in some of these things and uh, I think started to sling mud on some of the uh, social media platforms and um, I had the opportunity to talk to him and say you know politics is is about down here on earth and it's very temporal and we have to temper it as Christians uh, no matter what our political views that above all is the kingdom of God and the hope we have on the return of Jesus Christ although politicians in various countries are trying to do what they can to serve their citizens. But we know that in many cases, the world's problems will not be solved. We can alleviate, cut down on, but many of the great issues of our world are beyond uh, contemporary politicians to solve. And we as Christians are in the world, we're not of the world, we want to bring our faith to bear on some of the issues of life, social issues, justice, and all these things. But we ultimately are looking to the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the kingdom of God. It says some beautiful things in Scripture about that kingdom. First of all, though, we are called citizens of that kingdom, Philippians 3 and 20. But our citizenship is in heaven. And we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. And then we go into the book of Colossians, chapter 3, 1 to 4. Since you have been raised with Christ, when we became Christians, set your heart on things above. Where Christ is seated at the right hand of God, set your minds on things above, not on the earth. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. And, you know, it, it doesn't mean we're not engaged sometimes within the earth. Obviously, we're earthly as well as spiritual beings. And we know the, the uh, comment that people make, you know, that person is so heavenly minded that they're no earthly good. And I would say that if you're wise as a Christian, and if you have insight, you can be heavenly minded and very much an earthly good. Because if heaven is affecting your walk and talk and actions on earth, you can be a blessing no matter where you go, no matter what you're involved in. So that phrase is not indicative 
of what the Bible teaches. And uh, we look at in Revelation, uh, heaven or the new Jerusalem. And I did not see a temple in the city, it says, because the Lord Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city does not need sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives it light, and the Lamb is its lamp. They're beautiful words. I know they're hard to comprehend, but it's giving us a glimpse of what will be. You know that the glory, the glory, the Shekinah glory of God will be so great there that it will give light to everything. And the Lamb, Jesus, will be the light. Nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their splendor into it. But no, the gates will never be shut, for no, there will be no night there, and the glory and honor of the nations will be brought onto it. How wonderful to realize that the nations will be there coming into the new Jerusalem, that finally we will have the peace that we so desperately crave in our world because the Prince of Peace will be ruling. And so we say with the Apostle John on the last verse of Revelation 22:20, 20, we pray with the Apostle John as Christians, Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. May this be our expectation day by day. Father, we thank you that we have the great promise of the coming of your Son and our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Keep it ever in our minds as we go about to live our lives and to do the things we have to do. Help us to be encouraged, even as we see some of the news in, our, in the various news medias and the things that are happening in our world. Uh, not to live with our heads in the sand, as it were, but to realize that better days are coming and God will bring ultimate justice and we will be part of his great kingdom. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.